this. What happened last night? Oh, man. Oh. At least there's popcorn. Now where I'm at. Ooh. Oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Do you have a map? Thank you. Moravia? I shouldn't go into map making. Howdy everyone, I'm bringing you an urgent message from the Blard County Museum of Art. We do have an artist at large at the moment. No one seems to know where she is gone. She has been missing for three days. She was last seen at her easel with her tuba. So if you see a tuba playing artist walking around your parks, please do give us a call because we really don't know what's going on in her mind, where she might have gone. It seems as if she may have simply varnished. Hey everyone, I'm Brittany Vincent with Don't Need the Art. So kind of changed your mind as I realized Halloween's not until next Thursday, and as I said before, we usually do our filming Monday or Tuesday. So I wanted to be sure my pumpkins were still looking good for the actual Halloween night. So we're actually going to do that next week. But another opportunity came up is a friend, my friend who bought this painting and another from me a while back. Um, they're having the floors epoxied in their house and weren't sure if it would be safe to have the paintings in there in case there's a lot of dust and everything. And I told them I would varnish these paintings for them whenever they'd like, and now that I do that. And so, this seemed to be a perfect time for them to bring them to me and let me varnish them So um, while they were getting their floors done. So, great opportunity. And so, I wanted to show you guys more thorough explanation and description of how to varnish your oil paintings. I'm not sure if it works with acrylic or people do that for probably. Anyway, I do know this is what you do for oil paintings. Now it's very important to um, I guess there goes a brush to uh, wait at least six months to a year to put any varnish on your painting because even though it might be dry to the touch um, the under layers may still be wet or tacky and if you put that varnish on before everything is thoroughly dry you're going to have some problems so uh, since my paintings often have a lot of texture i go for the minimum of a year 
So for anyone who's bought my paintings that lives in state, I just offer, like if, if they sell before I get to varnish them, I just say um, that I will meet, meet up with them or they can bring it back and I will do a free varnish when the time comes. That way they can go ahead and have the art, but then I could varnish it for them later. I guess I have a honeybee checking me out. rough 
stuff that people like to use for oil paint and I'm just using it as a duster. I had never used this brush for paint before and I will eventually so after I use it once I'm not going to use it to dust my painting anymore. Um, you might want to just have a designated painting duster. I don't know. And I'm probably not getting a whole bunch off but I have a shot. So I just kind of vigorously dust it get any loose stuff off. Ideally you might just want to do this inside. I prefer doing it out under my porch but for filming as out under my porch it's a little more protected from the winds and things falling from trees but I also you know have all this ventilation. So if I do it I'm probably going to open a window or two. I mean, the, the varnish I use isn't super strong, so probably wouldn't be a problem for me. I don't know. But just in case, I would do that. Um, the varnish I am using is the Gamlin brand, the Gamvar Gloss. Um, I did a lot of reading on what varnishes are best before I got the courage to actually try varnishing and painting. This is something I'd only started doing this year. Hey, silly wasp. Yeah, there's... Go on. Um, but this one has been tested to be pretty nice. It looks great, and um, a lot of different varnishes have trouble with yellowing after time. And again, you know, it's a layer that's supposed to be removable. And so it's kind of like, meh. But you don't really want to have to remove it more than you have to. And so, yeah, not getting any yellowing is ideal. So this is a great one to use. All right, I think it's probably good. I'm not really seeing a bunch of particles on it. Now the bowl I use, let me bring this well, I'll bring this to for you to see. So this is the varnish that I like. Not that I have a huge sample size. I just did a lot of reading to find out what's best. And the bowl I prefer is this little glass bowl that you know, has these pretty little frilly things on it. The reason I like to use this bowl is because if I have any varnish left over, that I can just, you know, pour right back into here. So if you don't have a bowl like this, you might get a little funnel or something. And since I'm not mixing this with paint or anything, there's, there should be no problem with pouring it back in here. Because this is about, I think for this size, it's about $30, $31. And then we wait about a day and we put a second coat on, just as thin. And I think within a couple of days, three days, something like that is when it's safe to touch. I mean, it'll be just a little tacky, uh, maybe by the end of the day or something. And then it'll be, I, usually if you do it right, it should be pretty dry to the touch. You just don't want to push on it or anything fairly quickly. So go pouring in our stuff here um, and you need to have a brush that is varnish only this is my only brush that looks like this so I don't have to label it yet um, I do want to get one for painting at some point so when I do that I will just make sure this is that I scratch it in or have something attached to it to let me know this is for the varnish and this is hard as a rock right now because um, at least with this varnish, you do not have to rinse or wash your brush at all because this is soluble with itself. You can just, what I usually do is I'll let this just soak up the new varnish and then the stuff that's dried and hard on there will soak right back into the liquid and it'll be bendy and 
all that again. Uh, I guess while it's doing this, I will pause so you guys don't have to just stand, sit there and watch me hold this bowl. Or I don't know, maybe it's exciting. Is this entertainment? This might take a few minutes though. It might be worth noting that um, if you get tired of just standing there holding the brush, um, and you have a big old brush like I do, then you can just prop it up with your little bottle here. I'm surprised it hasn't blown over yet, but. Um, Yeah, our bristles are getting a little softer now. It's almost ready, I think. Getting close. I'll give it another minute or two. So, I'm just gonna, I wanted to zoom in a little bit here so you could really see what my brush is doing. I'm gonna show you how to add some varnish. Learned this from Gamblin's website. They have some great little tutorials for their products there. Anyway, so, oh, and see how this is all, yeah, nice and bendy. So that just dissolved right into that. Now what you want to do is get the little parasitoid wasps off of your canvas. And then, that was a really handsome one. Um, get your brush loaded up. Ooh, I got a lot there. We don't want a whole bunch. So I'm going to thin that out a bit. But what you want to do is you want to do these kind of rough circular motions like this. And you're going to see it kind of bubble up. But this will kind of work it into all the little nooks and crannies. Especially if you're like me and have a lot of texture. But you don't want it super thick because it's going to have trouble drying. And I've read about people who had it just never fully dry. So if you get it a little too thick like I did and you just uh, spread it out a little bit. You don't want to do that too much though because um, if you're, especially if you have a glossy one, I don't know if there are problems like this with the matte ones, but if you have a glossy one, the more you work it with the brush, the less of a gloss effect you're going to end up with. So, yeah. But, I'd rather deal with that than, you know, having a big pool of it that has trouble drying. Oh, go on. Now we've got a hemiptoran. And if you're doing this outdoors and the bugs are all happy and out, you may experience similar issues with them trying to hang out on your canvas. Load up again and this time so I don't want to get quite as much as I did since I got a little too much that first round. I'm just dipping it and then kind of going like that a bit. Because remember we're going to have a second coat of this. So, oh, still have a little much. And see how it's really coming out, coming to life there. This remains one of my most popular paintings still, and it's still high on my list. It's like, I think it's number eight for my oil paintings, and it's not as broken up as, as what I do now, but I really love it.
female Crocipennis. She, I think, did land in our bush, and then when I walked around to look at her, she flew a bit. But I saw minimal orange in the wings. It was definitely Crocipennis and not Saturata. Okay. Anyway. Oh yeah. So the bubbles. Um, so sometimes it'll be. Um, you might see where it's just rejecting the varnish. Um, and it'll kind of beat up on the canvas. And what that means is that because it's been so many years since it was painted, it actually already started to build up a layer of dirt. So, you know, the dusting process is only going to get your um, loose particles. It's not going to get anything that's really stuck on there. So, um, what I tried once was I got uh, the mineral spirits and I got a little rag with that on it and I just kind of gently cleaned it that way um, and then it seemed to take it okay but I think that's about the only thing you can do for that I may be wrong but that's the thing that I know of all right show the win See how I'm holding it at an angle like this, um, especially since I'm using a vigorous scrubbing motion. Um, that helps keep your brussel, brussels, your brussel sprouts, your um, bristles from getting too messed up. I mean, they're starting to get frayed. Which is unfortunate because this is an extensive brush, but this is what I bought it for. So that's what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to use it correctly. No, go on. Now we've got a wasp here. There it goes. A little paper wasp. It's okay if you see some little bubbles, those should go away. Just maybe keep an eye on them. But they should kind of pop as it starts to even out and dry. if I can. Cause, oh my god. Oh yeah, here we've got some heavy texturing, which is always a pain in the butt. Thank you. 
a lot easier for you people out there who don't do a ton of texturing. But even if you're into the impasto, still want to varnish if you can. Just helps protect your painting. there's a lot of heavy texturing that might pool up. Um, let me make sure that's showing for you guys. Um, yeah, so like that corner up there. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Sorry from some extreme camera talent here. Um, I've got a lot of heavy texture over here. And what that might do is it may, um, you know, basically have a bowl type section. I am so sorry. I just realized I might be able to better show this from here. Anyway, so you can see all that texture there. This stuff's going to try to really hold on to a lot of that varnish. So if you see that it's doing that, now first of all you'll want to, I wouldn't normally do this, but just to show you guys, um, you want to really make sure you're getting your little circular motions in there to make sure it gets in all the funky little crevices. But stuff's going to try to pull up here probably, especially if you accidentally get a little too much on your brush. But even if you're careful, you may still see some of this. So you're going to want to get a different brush, not the dusting brush and not your varnishing brush that's just dry. And, um, you're basically gonna dab it here and there. I mean, it may mean you're gonna knock back some of the gloss, but what that'll do is it'll suck up some of that excess varnish um, so that you don't have to worry about that not drying or whatever. But I think, I think we're good. Um, so I won't show you guys the next varnishing stage just since it's exact it's just basically repeat what we did today but you're gonna wait like I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to do this and since it's gonna be raining tomorrow probably I'm not gonna do it out here so you wouldn't get as good of you anyway but that is how you varnish it and then um, I'm not so sure about if it has to be laying flat or not. It shouldn't matter too much. If you do it right, there shouldn't be a bunch of blobs that are going to run everywhere anyway. But I also don't know much. Just to be safe, maybe go ahead and keep it flat while it's drying. Um, but probably in like two or three days, you can hang it back on the wall. So I'm hoping to have this back to them for their event Saturday. And so it can be on their wall. Anyway. Uh, that's an important process of painting that, um, here, let me let you see the whole thing again. Um, woo! <laughs> whoops. Anyway, that's an important process of painting that I didn't start doing until recently, so, um, if you're an oil painter and you want to help them stay healthy and last a long time, you want to varnish. And really, it looks great when you do. So, this helps bring out those colors. And I didn't know how I'd feel about the gloss. I enjoy it, but they do 
make some matte ones and there is a way to um, for people who don't like the full matte or the full gloss there are some ratios you can look up of mixing a couple of kinds to get kind of an in-between but to me I like the gloss and it's really simple um, let's see I have some stuff yeah left over in the bowl so I guess I can show you how I pour that back in um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And da -da 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 the end. There you go, and then you have that for next time. And I don't really wash the bowl; I just let it dry out. Because again, I mean, it might be good if you leave it out where it can get dusty to occasionally wash it, but whatever. Anyway, I hope this was a useful video for you who might want to learn how to varnish. And for those who haven't seen the dog painting in a while, here it is, all varnished, isn't that great? So next week we will definitely be doing pumpkins. So be sure to join us for some awesome pumpkin carving. We'll have film guy and little one with us to help out. It's gonna be awesome. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Come on, Buford. Let's go find out where we're at. Oh.